Hello YouTubers, my name is Keechan and today I will be starting up a campaign in Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, for those that are not aware, is a board game that came out I think in 2017 and it, just a, about a year ago it was then finally digitalized so that you can now play it on PC on various platforms. Um, I have never really touched Gloomhaven but people have been telling me for a while now that it is just my thing and so I thought I could make an entertaining campaign out of it. Uh, so this will be kind of a, a weird little mix-up. I will be playing a Guildmaster campaign here. A uh, new one on the deadly difficulty. <laughs> Why not? Let's bring out the true masochist playthrough here to make it interesting for those that have played the game before and might think it is fun and to watch me suffer. Uh, meanwhile, I will go a little bit slowly at times, trying to explain it for the newcomers that are not aware of the game, so that everyone gets something out of this campaign. It should be fun, and and people have been telling me, or like not, uh, so I've been heard uh, on the internet that I'm supposed to play the Guildmaster campaign first. Uh, this is the campaign that was made specifically for the digital version. You play that first. You learn how to play, then you do the campaign mode from the original board game, which is supposed to be slightly harder and, and more unforgiving. And so, yeah, the concept for me in, in this case is to play it on deadly difficulty, see how far we get, learn how to play the game proper, and then when we inevitably fail and die, I will start up a campaign and we can see what... Uh, uh, Based on experiences gained in the Guildmaster playthrough, we'll see what kind of campaign difficulty I'll run for the other campaign. This will be Keechan's guild. There you go. Guild. How do you spell guild? Guild. <laughs> Keechan's. I was right. Guild. Like so. And we'll make some rules, some house rules here that makes the game slightly easier for me. Now we're playing on the, diff the hardest difficulty there is. For reference, that means that monsters and traps are higher, uh, more dangerous, and then but gold will also be worth more. I think that's what this means. So you are punished more, but you're also rewarded more, and so can survive if we can collect all the gold. We will share gold between our entire mercenary squad. It would be interesting to split gold, but I'm not experienced enough, I think, in micromanaging each individual mercenary. Uh, gold seems a little bit too much right now. So for now, we will share the gold. <clears throat> then there are various other house rules that we can activate here. And I will make a few adjustments to the base recommendations. For attack modifiers, and I'll explain all of that later, we can have two different settings where you don't have times two and times zeros, but instead more to minus one and minus uh, pl and plus two. Advantage and disadvantage, uh, you cannot roll the zero attack modifier if you have advantage. I think that's fine. Line of sight, we will use the adjusted line of sight uh, rules here with center hex because it's recommended. And this, the summons that we summon <clears throat> will originally not move at all if there is nothing, no enemies for them to move towards. But the recommended variant is that they move towards the summoner whenever there are no enemies. And I think I like that. Makes them a little bit more lively, if you will. And then the final thing that I will adjust is the spawn monster gold drops. So normally spawn monsters that appear during a, com uh, a scenario will not provide you with gold, but I will turn that on so that we can get more gold in this hard difficulty mode. I think that'll be uh, a nice way to offset the, um, the difficulty a little bit. Then there are various DLC that we can turn on, and if, if this goes well for the YouTube playthrough, I might buy the DLC and then try playing with that. But for now, no DLC. So, we'll start it up. The next thing that you have to choose, and this is for the new players, then there's a little uh, piece of helpful information here. I, I made the mistake of playing through the tutorials 
outside of the campaign before I started playing or testing my first run. And it turns out that you can play through the tutorial uh, inside of the campaign itself and the gold and the XP that you acquire there uh, actually carries over into the real campaign so that if we hit quick start we are in fact punished for not playing the tutorial first. Uh, and so we are going to not play the whole tutorial but the story intro. The story intro will allow, allow me as the YouTuber here to explain all the rules sort of go like a little bit slower at the beginning here and we'll go through some the scenarios that we can't really lose, I think, but that um, show how the game is played. And as I said, we are allowed to ac uh, accumulate XP and gold throughout these, uh, sto this story opening here. So we will also be rewarded for playing it. I think that uh, makes a lot of sense. So let's go with that for now. And I hope it's not too boring for the veterans watching. All right. <clears throat> and there is a... I've, 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 been, I've been weirded out a little bit by this uh, the voice acting in this game. Because there was voice acting when I first started playing through the tutorials. But then at some point it stops. So I'm not sure. But I'm going to have to give voice, I suppose, to all of the NPCs talking. And it's not too much, I think. It's not like there's an endless dialogue here. So I'll go and do the thing. This is our trainer. He says, great work through the basic training missions. Thanks. Allow me to introduce you to the third member of our guild. He ain't much of a fighter, though. So at this point, we have already been introduced to the basic fighter and a rogue. And again, we will see plenty of them, so don't worry about it. Uh, and there's a merchant here. <clears throat> who is theoretically part of our guild, but not a playable character. He says, hey, not all of us are particularly uh, particularly care to be experts at stabbing people. Uh, excuse me. Hmm. Greetings, guildmaster. I'm the humbled merchant of your Fletling guild. I deal with the important aspects of running a guild. In other words, money. Which, might I add, is sorely lacking at the moment. What you can see right now is the world map. You've probably noticed it looks a bit barren at the moment, and well, I'm not so. I've got some good news and some bad news for you. The bad news is that the realm has been overrun with all manner of unpleasant monsters, rogue bandits, wandering undead, dark cultists, you name it. The good news is that you are going to help us restore the routes back to the other settlements out there, hidden in the fog. But before we can do anything about that, we'll need to get some mercenaries on the guild roster. Let's start with the with actually recruiting the poor old brute, who's got himself into a spot of bother again. So this is the guy that you we've already seen in the tutorial, if you've done that. Here, I am brute. Yet again, the brute finds himself in a precarious situation. Guide him out safely and he'll surely join the guild. We will. I shall. The trainer tells you to head to the Demon's Gate graveyard, and there you find a mausoleum with a smashed-in front door. Walking down the steps into the gloom below, you fo follow a trail of broken bones until you hear the sounds of battle. Entering a chamber, the badly wounded brute is facing off against a number of undead. And I don't actually know if the difficulty setting that we have chosen affects this scenario here. I think it does not, no. Let's begin looking more closely at what individual character can do. In this scenario, the brood has level 1 uh, living bones elites to deal with, um, which means that their stats will be greater than their level 0 counterparts. Monster stats are combined with a base ability card drawn for the monster's class turn, resulting in the cards you see when the monster cards for the round are revealed. So expect them to move a bit further, attack a bit harder, especially as they are elites. Note how they both have innate shield 1, indicated here. Each point of shield prevents 1 damage from incoming attacks. However, an amount of shield can be ignored if it targeted with an attack with pierce. I have it on good authority that these living bones are going to attack more than once each turn. 
You are low on cards and won't be able to afford to burn cards, so surviving here will require some shielding of your own. By the way, while these enemies' shields are an innate, persistent effect, normally active bonuses abilities such as shield are accompanied by a round or persistent duration icon indeed so we always have to go for in, in in gloomhaven we always play a scenario with specific objectives once the objectives are completed the scenario ends this is important for various reasons but uh, suffice to say it, here are our so objectives this time as well we've already uh, sort of covered it uh, we have to kill the living bones apply some shield and use minor healing potion so, uh, Gloomhaven, let's talk a bit about it eh? in detail. Now we are in a combat here. In Gloomhaven, you have your character, your mercenary, uh, from one to four, depending on who you choose to go with. I think you have to go minimum two now that I think about it. But here's our brute, for example. The brute then has his own deck of cards. They look like so. We have to choose two cards to play every round. Like so. The first card we choose, uh, the first card we choose will determine our initiative up here, when whether we go before or after the skeletons. We have been told in this round specifically, uh, we have to apply shield, use the health potion, and kill with a pierce attack. So let's find the pierce attack. That is this one here. And we have to apply shield, that's this card here. We will choose the shield first, so that we get the low initiative. That means we act first. Do, do, do. Maybe I have to turn down the music ever so slightly here. Oh. There, let's try it like that. And they will use this card here. The enemy cards are also randomized from a deck of their own. They will move forward, but won't because they are already adjacent to the closest uh, enemy. And then they will attack two, target one enemy with all attacks. I'm not sure where it indicates that they will attack multiple times. Yeah. This is something I haven't figured out yet, but we will learn more later. We act first because our initiative was lower than theirs. We will attack. And so when whenever we have, cho we have cho chosen two cards, when it is the turn of the brute then you have to select uh, one ability on one of the cards and then you can only use the uh, like the opposite on the other card so if i choose the top one on the shield bash we could only move or use the lower ability on the tremble card as such it is highlighted when i move up and down here the order doesn't really matter but of course it does uh, but it suffice to say he can do whatever he wants on his turn in any order here um if you do not want to do any of the things on the card, you can choose to either replace the top one for two attack, a default attack, or the bottom one for a default move, right? So anyway, we're going to do what he said. He wants me to shield myself. There's only one option, one on one target, so we confirm. He will do a little thing. Now he has a shield. We will spend the healing potion, as was indicated by the scenario that we were supposed to do there healing a bit and then we will tremble we will kill this guy over here i suppose good stuff then the skeleton will go we will take the damage here uh we'll probably use the heater shield for this one so we have a shield that we can tap if you will uh to decrease the damage gained from one attack Let's do that now, then receive the one damage here. And then again. We are also uh, allowed to burn a card instead of taking the damage or burn two discarded cards. Right now we will not be doing any of that. And he attacked again. So we choose to receive the damage. Yikes, that was quite uh, the onslaught. Nonetheless, your shield prevented enough damage to keep the brute alive. Whew. Final objective, kill the remaining living bones. Good luck, he's a tanky one. A tip for you, perhaps you could use the old push and trap combo. Note that the shield only prevents damage from an attack, but it does not do anything against direct damage, such as traps. So we have the spare dagger that we can activate in fact we cannot do that because we only have one card in our pool right now 
the only way to do anything would be to either do a long rest or short rest, since we have to activate two cards on a turn. So the way you regain cards from your discard pool is through one of the two rest options. If we take a long rest, that counts for the entire turn. We get to choose a card to burn from our discard pile. They go into the burn pile down here. Burn cards can never be recovered unless you have special rules that allow you to. And you heal a bit. But then you lose your entire turn, which means the skeleton will probably kill us. So the other option is to do a short rest, which is instantaneous. But then a random discarded card is burned. We have to do this though, so it burns our trample. Oh no, this is pre-selected for the scenario, so that's fine. And then we should have a push card here, indeed. We have the warding strength, which will push an enemy two spaces back, and that will go through the traps there. So we we accompany that with the, taking the shield bash first to get the lowest initiative possible. And then we do the... Uh, let me just check. Yeah, we're going to do that in selection. He will do a move four, then attack two, target th three different targets. Oh no. But he only has six health indicated here and each of these traps do uh, three damage so when we push him two sp spaces back here confirm we are allowed to we can push him like diagonally and stuff too as long as it is away from the brute so we'll go like that we go through the traps and dies he drops gold. We will attempt to pick up some gold before the scenario ends here. This is all we can do. In order to pick up gold, you have to end your turn on the gold pile in order to pick it up, unless you have special rules that say otherwise. So here, we get to pick up the four gold, modified by our difficulty level. That was indeed correct. Save the brood yet again. I hear he's decided that adventuring alone is not working out for him, so he's agreed to be the first mercenary in your guild. Let's get out of this dusty crypt and see who else we can recruit. Indeed. The brood sure can soak up damage well, but he's not the most mobile. Hmm. Having ample funds is going to be of utmost importance in getting this guild off the ground. Do you know anyone good at um, gold acquisition? Oh, I know, just a woman. She's also dab. Uh, she's also a dab hand at poking holes in those who get in her way. She's in the process of liberating some gold right now. Shall we lend her a hand? And I think this is another <clears throat> nice battle to give some introduction to the game. The trainer points you in the direction of a ruined crypt on the outskirts of town. Dead bandits litter the area, many with knives still embedded in their corpses. It is clear they didn't see their attacker coming. Oh, second potential recruit incoming. And here we are. Meet the scoundrel. She is incredibly nimble and mobile, not to mention able to combo off huge amounts of melee damage when the things line up just right. Let's help her out with this of this sticky situation. Firstly, you need to kill three archers this round before they attack. You certainly need something that can hit more than one target at a time. Yeah, like the throwing knights have a... Uh, if I click that one here, it has a target ability. You can target X amount of enemies and that's range three. And it has low initiative, so we'll pick that first. And then there should be, indeed here, the smoke bomb. Secondary ability has a pull so that we can pull this archer into the trap here. That will be our play for the turn then. And they're doing a thing, but they're not going to do a thing because we're going to murder them. There, we kill the first two. Again, we could do it in any order, but let's just start with the throwing knives here. We gain a bit of XP, that's what this symbol here indicates, that this is XP gained for playing this specific ability. And again, that is important for when we get into the actual game after this. You would not be gaining those XP if you started with the quick start. So we are rewarding ourselves for doing the little tutorial bit. Ha! Feels good to be picking off multiple targets in a single turn, doesn't it? One last objective, loot at least five gold piles of gold 
uh, this round. A tip for you. Sometimes the top half of a card allows you to move too. Loot abilities uh, pick up all the gold within the radius specified by the value, so you could work so you work out where you need to stand and get looting. Indeed. Lots of gold lying around over here, so we have to do a short rest because otherwise we cannot do anything. We lose a card, again it's predetermined by the scenario here, so that we can do our thing. We have a loot 2 ability that we want to play, that's the throwing knives again. And then we just need a movement ability on the top half of any card, the quick hands here. Yeah. So we play the, the quick hands first, like so. And then we play the loot 2 from here. Uh, we have to skip the attack of the quick hands. Then we loot 2. We're not getting this gold pile over here, but we are getting all this gold over there. And the gold is counted in the top right here. 24. Very nice. 24 is a lot of gold. Victory. Nice. Let me just take care of that gold for you. For your assistance in this scenario, the scoundrel has agreed to join the guild. That means we've got enough mercenaries now for a proper mission. And then we will get a proper mission, if I recall correctly. The first thing we should do as a guild is re-establish the trade route with Gibbet Hild to the west. We've been having a small problem with bandits in the woodland and route, but with a brood and a scoundrel to assist, there's nothing that should cause you any trouble. It'll give you some much needed experience on the job and allow me to get some new items in stock once the way is cleared. Go knock some bandits head together. Real. So here's our first real mission. Still kind of an, an, a tutorial introductory mission, and there will be more tutorials later, but this one is played like a real scenario. The road is deserted as you make your way towards Gibbet Hill. Trading in the area has effectively stopped for many months now, so with so few daring to venture along the main highways. As you make your way along the trail, wending, uh, wending its way through a wooden grove, the crack of a twig snapping underfoot pierces the silence. You hear rustling in the undergrowth, getting louder as its source makes its way towards you. Toss a coin to your hangman. Uh, bandits are blocking the ro road to give it hill, it's up to you to drive them away. Let us do it. Shouldn't be much of a hassle. Right, this is your first proper fight. Looks like two uh, looks like two clearings with a couple bandits each. Just remember what I've taught you, and you don't need to enter and and don't enter the second clearing until you're ready. You can change your character starting positions this time by clicking the white hexes, so choose a formation that suits you before starting your first turn. By the way, if you are struggling to make out objects and enemies in the undergrowth, you can press tab to highlight them. Like so. You can also see the turn order of monsters uh, of the same class this way. Here he, we have a Bandit Archer 3 and a Bandit Archer 5, so this one would go first. Lower numbers act first, indeed. Okay, so we can do a little bit of shuffling around here. Now I've done this one at least once before, of course that was on a lower difficulty, but it doesn't look like these guys have leveled up with the increase of the difficulty, unless I'm mistaken. This trap does two damage, here's some gold and there's some gold. So the real kicker in these kinds of missions is that we need to pick up all the gold before we finish up the quest. So sometimes we want to leave an enemy alive while we're picking up the gold, maybe even go a bit slow before we open the door and get the gold picked up first. Stuff like that, which is a little bit uh, arbitrary and gamey, if you will, but uh, it is the name of the game and we are we're gonna do it. So here, I will do what I did the first time I played this specific mission here. I want to play a balanced measure with a high movement here. Skewer also gives us one XP for playing it. And the balanced measure will do the amount of damage equal to uh, movement we've done that turn. So let me go like this. Now Skewer will go first. Uh, Skewer will determine our initiative. Sorry, that's what I meant. Meanwhile, uh, so with him doing that, he can move up to six squares, get all the way to the backline archer, and kill him this turn. 
Meanwhile, the scoundrel will try to kill the front liner this turn so that they only get one. And I forgot how I did that, I think. I think I did special mixture here. We move three and then poison an enemy. When you poison someone, they take one extra damage from all attacks. Uh, and if they ever should heal, instead of healing anything, they will just remove the poison. So this was a nice little movement. We move up and then we poison the enemy. And then you uh, stab them in the face, dealing one extra damage. We want to find a low cost here. This, the backstab should be able to kill him. Here, it will do two extra damage and gain plus and gain one uh, XP when its target is adjacent to none of its allies, indeed. Uh, but the flanking strike should be enough. And this one burns, also gains XP. We're trying to milk the XP out of out of um, everything here. So let me play the flanking strike here, and we'll play that first. So there, we have four initiative on her. Now the bandit archers here, and I kind of knew this, but they play a very low initiative card, so we are not allowed to go up and rush the other guy before he moves with the brute. So they do get an attack off with him. He will move one and attack one, deal one damage within range three, and then create a new trap. Not a big deal, we can handle that. So uh, the, the rogue will still go first, the scoundrel here. She will move the three up there, confirm that movement. Then poison this archer. And there's something that I haven't talked about. I'm not sure if it's in effect yet. It is. So here we have the attack modifier deck. Noted by the pips down below, the amount of every card. They are like a little deck of cards. Whenever you do any attack, you will draw one of these cards and apply that amount of damage or lose that amount of damage from your attack. So you can have a minus one down all the way down to a no damage attack and all the way up to a double attack, double damage attack. This is a little bit of a randomizer. And what that means is that even though I am supposed to deal four damage here, it's actually not a guaranteed kill. And it should be interesting to see whether we get it. We did. We drew a zero. And that is removed from her deck and loaded here by the pips being grayed out. So you will eventually have to draw the zero damage thing and get rid of it that way. We end her turn. The archer will then go to a minus one, so dealing zero damage. Lucky for us. And all the enemies draw, uh, use the same deck. I'm not sure if it's all the enemies of the same type use the same deck or all the enemies in general using the same deck, but they do have that on the right here. I can hover over it. But you see that he has used a minus one card. Uh, we will run up next to this dude here. Like so. Do, 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 do. Not spending the final move. Skip. And then we will do the balance measure, which gives us one XP. Doing five damage. Theoretically possible that if we don't kill him. Let's see. But what that means is that it is nice to overkill the enemies sometimes, just by a little bit, especially if you want to make 100% sure that you kill. And again, you cannot be 100% sure. So, yeah, it's an interesting system for sure. Now, there are no enemies on the board, but there's gold that we want to pick up, and there's traps that we could disarm. Like so. In here, we have the Thieves' Knack. Here it says, Thieves' Knack. Disarm one adjacent trap. That will net her two XP for disarming a trap. So we definitely will want to do that. And I think I will make her stand on this goal to do it. So then it doesn't really matter what card I am using to do it. I will just use the Venom Shift here. Sure. And there may be some consideration to go in there, but I am not going to do that right now. Meanwhile, the Brute will run to this tile and then play Grab and Go for the loot one which means I can play any other card to get there with the two basic movement. Uh, we'll find something that doesn't give XP so that we can uh, play something that gives XP later. The Provoking Roar is really good. Stun is really good. Spare Dagger, pretty decent. Maybe an AoE attack. We won't need them. So like this one here, Sweeping Blow. Good. Then, as I said, we will move over here with the Rogue. 
scoundrel, rogue, whatever. I'm going to call her the rogue just because that's what she's in my brain. There, disarm this trap. Gaining some XP. Ending her turn, she picks up the gold. Then the brute moves over here, confirms that movement, and then plays grab and go, do it one. And now we have a choice to make, and I think I want to milk the scenario a little bit, because why wouldn't I? Uh, I wonder, is there something that I can play from your hand here that will give you XP? I don't know how that works. I'll try it out right now. Yeah. Like if I played the Leaping Cleave here and the Tremble, both of which are XP gaining abilities, can we get XP for not attacking anyone? I wonder. And why are we doing that? We're doing that because I want to do a long rest To get all the cards back in from in here, including the Thieves' Knack, so that I can disarm the other trap and spend some time here just doing that. Now I know that the, the fight on the other side of the door here is fairly easy, so I want to see if we can milk it like this. I'll do the long rest. Here we will do Leaping Cleave. Just attack. Uh, I cannot attack out in the, 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 the dead air. Okay, good, to, good thing to know, I suppose. So skip that attack. And then we will play this move, which should be allowed, even though there's nothing to, to trample here. So confirm that movement. Running a bit back and forth here. That gained him 2 XP, indeed. Uh-huh. Look at that. And she does the long uh, rest. Get, you have still have to burn a card, but you heal, and then you refresh all your spent item cards, too. Ah, yeah. Here we will burn... Let's see... The Venom Shift is fine. It does give you does give you XP if you played it. Let me burn this special mixture then. And Scoundrel's turn. Now I will play the Thieves Knack and let's just go with Venom Shift. This one here. Swiftbow is also kind of nice. Loo lo looting every hex you enter with this action. Okay. Uh, let me play the throwing knives doesn't really matter. Let's go for throwing knives. Sure. Is there another way for me to milk your abilities here, sir? No, I think not. But he does have to play something. This is maybe the turn where he long rests before we open the door next turn. Or you know what? He could just run in and start killing things while she's hanging back here. I think we will open the door this turn. It'll be fine. So I will play like a long movement if we have. Oh, we don't have a long movement ability. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really line this up perfectly. Enemy who targets one of your adjacent... What does this say? Any, any enemy who targets one of your adjacent allies with an attack this round targets you with that attack instead. Ah, so it's like a taunt tanking ability. We can run in three tiles. Let's open the door with the overwhelming assault and then we'll just equip a spare dagger in the other hand I don't remember the exact positioning of people on the other side here this should be fine so in selection rogue goes first she will move up here there and disarm the trap Gaining 2 XP. Milking the tutorial for everything that we can. Here. So this is the other room in the dungeon. And the, the trick here then is that there is gold all the way around on the floor and stuff. That we want to pick up before we finish off the two enemies. I have a spare dagger equipped. They immediately get a card. They are going to move three and then attack for one damage. Not a big deal. I will play his Boots of Striding here. Move the way all the way over there and then throw the dagger at this guy. Skip movement. Then no push. 
then spare dagger. Plus one, nice. And he picks up the gold. They will go. And uh, why do we not just flip the heater shield here? I think that's fine. Okay. Now, how do we get to the gold in the back there? The scoundrel is best at picking that stuff up if we have the loot 2 card. We do not have the loot 2 card. It's down here at the floor tonight. Mm -hmm. But if she stood here and played the loot 1, we would be able to get all the things. So maybe that is what we're going to play towards, which means we need a lot of movement on her. Uh, move 6, for example. I mean, that means I mean this this guy is not gonna kill my dude, so we're just gonna let him like run past him and let him live a little bit. It'll be fine. Uh, we'll play. Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Oh, that's not enough. Too bad. If I let him come in here, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Damn it, not far enough. Okay, so it's going to take a few turns to collect all that gold. But the gold, man, is the name of the game. So, yeah. Let's see if we can play something else. Maybe that gives a bit of XP, then. I'll try to finish him off with the invisible uh, from the smoke bomb. Since that gives you extra two, two extra bonus XP for the kill. That sounds like a good idea to me. I will play... Oh, the quick hands is also the one that loots. Huh. So there's just no way to win with this. Next turn we will play the Venom Shift for the movement. So let's go just... Maybe we play the Flanking Strike right now and the Swift Bow. Brute will kill the enemy here and then spend two movement to get over to this gold here. Oh, that'll get him out of the way. Aha, look at this. Let's play the Venom Shift indeed as the first Thing, so that she is later in the initiative, and then the move six. There's the play. He will smash that guy in the face with the stun attack here, gaining two XP, and then just provoking roar with the other one. That's fine. Good. Continue. Then we smack you. We threw a minus one, but severely overkilled him, so it didn't matter. And then we'll go and pick up this goal right now. That should make this rogue or bandit guard run over here. Ah, but I didn't check what ability he picked. He had a raged attack. My bad. So we didn't get what we wanted. We will run past him. And leave it at that. Not spending the Venom Shift for anything. Ending the turn. So I need three movement and then the quick hands to pick up the stuff. We can move five and then do quick hands. Perfect. And I meanwhile, the blue will try to pick up the other gold stack over here. He is out of cards, so he would have to rest. And I think he just long rests. That that's fine. That helps him tank also, and we're not trying to kill the enemy here. Uh, he's doing an attack two with poison. Ah, but uh, he's not moving at all, so he's not going to attack anything. He's just going to pound his shield and gain plus one defense or shield specifically. Oh, this is this. ah. Mm, I'm a bit of a dummy here. We're not going to be able to get the, all the loot here. That's fine. We'll just get the one furthest away. And skip movement. Now we cannot play the loot, of course. So, yeah, we'll have to play the quick hands, but skip and skip attack. I'll try to do this fast. He pounds his shield. And so it feels like this is a bit slow and uh, maybe a little bit boring. 
but again we're in the tutorial and the thing is that we are we're burning cards so we do not have infinite playtime like this and eventually we would run out of juice and when you run out of cards you, your hero um, i'm gonna say uh, quotation marks he dies the, the the term is that they get exhausted i don't think it matters actually as long as as long as you get to the victory screen at the end with any of your surviving characters then no penalty as far as i'm aware there may be a penalty here we loot every hex we move through let me play that first the smoke bomb first there then you move over with this card and play this card good enough let's see what he does we're also getting a feel for what kind of cards the opponent will play when we do it like this oh and we can turn invisible here perfect um it is perfect if we can get to him next turn the invisible will allow me to do double damage and gain two xp for the strike but we would need one two three four five movement probably okay you know what i think we can do it we'll turn invisible now and then if we are not really unlucky with the short rest we will have a five movement card and the scoundrel's turn oh i can even push him towards her ah he will move after the fact though so that doesn't work out um, I will just pick up the goal, right? No, you know what? Let me let me make it easier for Mrs. Scoundrel. I will pull him closer to her. Let's see, one, two, three, four. If I make him move here, yeah, we might miss out on one gold pile then if I'm doing this. But now I'm worried more about the, her gaining the XP from the the smoke bomb. I think this works out. There, he moved towards her. Now she needs to do a short rest. Let's see what cards. So then she loses a random card from her discard. She lost the backstep. So, or, or I can take one damage to redraw that. But we are, I think we're fine. This is a five move card. We are just fine. Burn that. And then we will play a uh, an attack that gives us XP. The smoke bomb is now here, as it is an ongoing effect at the moment. Uh, when you are invisible, it only lasts one turn, but the smoke bomb thing effectively stays until she uses it while invisible. It's a little bit of a weird mechanic. I've screwed that up once, at least. But anyway, we are going to move five and do a flanking strike. So let's make sure we do the flanking strike first. And then I would love for him to be able to reach the other... No, he cannot reach this gold pile unless he gains a movement card back. No, he cannot. Damn it. Okay, so we are not grabbing that other gold pile. Ah, but he can grab the gold pile that this bandit guard drops. How about that? If I give him a high, higher, well, higher than four initiative. Let's see if this works out as I have planned it. Here we move five. Let's just go over here. Why not? Do, 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 do. And then flanking strike this guy. She gains a bunch of XP for that. I wish we could see that more clearly. Uh, we end her turn. I think Mr. Blue still gets his turn. It, he does indeed. So he can end his turn on this gold pile. Skip movement. Can't do the attack. Can't attack a friendly with it. <laughs> it's fine. End the Blue's turn. And like that, we have milked the scenario for everything that it had. 
I may be skipping over some of the mechanics. If you are a newbie to this game like I am and you have any questions, you can post them down in the chat or in the comment section below. And uh, me, I, I will myself or someone else might chime in and help you out with uh, the answer. For now, I think this would be a good stopping point for this the first episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying Gloomhaven. There will be at least one more of this uh, introductory, um, these introductory missions, and then we will go into the real missions where it gets a little bit more juicy. We will have four characters on the board, and a lot of other stuff will be happening. So um, until then, I hope you still will enjoy it. See you then, guys, uh, and bye-bye.